In this video, I'm going to be doing an in-depth analysis of what I was thinking during a ranked match I played recently. People have been asking to see more in-depth videos alongside the short guides I've been making on just general tips, and I thought this would be a pretty good game to showcase because we were playing from behind most of the match. I made some good plays, but also a fair amount of mistakes that I want to point out. Here's the MMR of the match. You can see it was a high diamond lobby, so pretty good players on both sides. I was duo queued and in comms with our Sylvanas. Right here, I see the Awelix hit level 3, so I'm telling my duo lane to be careful since I'm not coming over. Mid's pushed up super far, and it's a level 2 Merlin, so I look for a gank, and we get an easy first blood. Unfortunately, Awelix did manage to make the gank happen on right. They pushed up super far even though it was called. Since their jungler isn't right, it's best to go for right mid camps first to deny them the option. We immediately go to lefts and secure those as well, which is a really good start to this game. Laners really need to watch out for early ganks right now. Jungles have no farm available after they clear their second speed buff, so most players will look for an early kill. I back for T2 Mace and head towards Solo because my left farm is spawning, and I want to defend our blue buff in case Awelix pressures it. After that, I see their Guan is low and pathing towards his blue buff, so we set up an ambush. Wall placement could have been better here, but we still pick up an easy kill. Awelix also delivered the blue buff right to us, and hey, free farm is always good. Just helping my Agni clear his red buff and then looking towards mid camps. I decide to look for a regank on the Guan. This can be a really good way to destroy someone's laning phase and possibly put their mental in the gutter. Since I'm 5 and he's still level 4, it would probably be a free kill, but unfortunately he levels up and my teammate calls that he's backing. At this point, I hear Merlin clearing mid camps. Right now, it's really hard to solo clear these things early game, so you really shouldn't try unless you know for sure nobody can stop you. He did manage to juke my ult, which stalled for his team to show up, but I managed to pick up the kill and luckily my team was there to help bail me out. Not sure I needed the beads there, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. If their jungler was around, I definitely would have gotten punished and died. But since he wasn't there, I'm telling my Q partner that he might come duo. I still haven't seen the Awelix on the map, so I drag the back camp to tower in case she's hunting me or looking to invade. Here I'm just clearing my farm. Unfortunately, Awelix manages to gank the King Arthur, so I'm immediately looking to defend our blue buff. Once I realize Awelix isn't invading, I look towards their blue buff. Guan was really low, and I thought he might stay to greet it, which could have been a free kill. I see Awelix on the map in mid, so I know I can invade the buff for free. Just farming. I realized I can back for T2 Hydras, which is actually a pretty decent power spike and I wouldn't lose too much time on my path to speed buff anyway. I saw the fight going on at right mids, and to be honest, I probably should have skipped speed buff and ulted in to help sooner. Fortunately, our Agni managed to live at the cost of his beads, and we took down the Awelix. Right here, I'm calling to my friend that we can get more, so we chase out the Geb and manage to pick him up as well. I immediately look to invade their buffs, which unfortunately we're all down, but it's still good to check. Just gonna clear right mid camps and head over to my speed that's spawning. Some people wanted to see a jungle pathing guide, and I still might make a video with some general tips on pathing if people really want to see it, but it's also good for you to see how I decide where to go in a real match. I'm looking for a gank on the on her here, and this is where I made my first big mistake of the game. I realized I was in danger, and did manage to turn the Awelix ult, but unfortunately my hammer didn't come up in time, and I died to the Honor, which was a really big kill for him. I should have ulted out as soon as I realized I might die. Just back to farming, looking to clear all my camps as they spawn. That's definitely something you want to micromanage as a jungler, because if you're clearing your camps as soon as they spawn and the enemy isn't, you're effectively getting more farm over time since it will spawn again sooner.
Here again, I probably should have skipped my camp to help my teammates sooner. I know the max range of Thoralt pretty well, so I click it instantly to land on the Awelix before she can escape. Once I land though, I saw that Honor stuck around at 1 HP, and a quick hammer to the face took him down. We stayed a little longer to see if we could get the Awelix as well, but Sylvanas was too low to keep tanking, and I think Geb had ult, so I just decided to take what we got and leave. I see Awelix ganking left, so I know I'm clear to invade her speed buff here. Merlin potentially could have defended this because he had just respawned, but I see him briefly on the map in mid, and since Honor was just clearing his wave in right, I know I'm all clear to throw my hammer. I would have held my hammer and just punched it to death if I thought someone could show, but I did have my ult up in case something went south. Also, that little ward I put between the mid towers is super strong, and you can get a lot of info off it, so definitely look to place one there if you're in the enemy jungle. Here I look for another gank on the Honor. Because I had bluestone, I can tell by the yellow numbers through the wall that he instantly moved after my stun hit him, so I know he used beads. Geb shows up, and I know I got a dip or I'm gonna die. I briefly looked back to see if I could maybe re-engage since my team was coming, but decided not to risk it, which was probably the right choice. Overall, my ult for his beads is a good trade. You'll see me typing out beads and Aegis timers a lot this game. This is a super helpful thing to keep track of, especially as a jungler like Thor, where knowing someone's relics are down can make them an easy kill. Tier 1 Beads and Aegis currently have a 170 second cooldown, so if you look at the game clock right around when they're used, it's pretty easy to know when they'll come up. No scripts necessary for something so simple, just a little math. I saw a Wheelix pathing right on the ward I mentioned, so I call it out, but maybe I should have pinged it too because my ADC didn't seem to hear me and picked a fight at gold buff. I see Guan on his way from mid, and since I know they're up two players in this fight, I call to give them gold fury and take pyromancer. Unfortunately, this is where I make my second big mistake of the game. I thought I might be able to squeeze a wall between Guan and Agni to save him, but they were too close together. And then I definitely should have beads or altered the stun, but I don't know what went through my head, I just kind of blanked out and let them kill me. So yeah, they ended up getting Gold Fury for free, and obviously we couldn't trade Pyro since three of us were dead. I head left side here to clear my speed in back camps, and I noticed that Guan was fighting for Totem at half HP. Since I know his ult is still down from the last fight, I figure it'll be an easy gank. I didn't auto-cancel before throwing the hammer, which was a mistake that allowed him to get out on 1 HP. Some nice movement kept him alive a little while longer, but eventually we picked him up. A Wheelix jumping in to finish the Arthur is definitely a mistake. She should have just left when the Guan died, so we kill her as well, and then the Geb also dies trying to save her. This fight was really big for me since before this point, I was two levels down. We also got the Merlin's Beads, which is a nice bonus. The lesson we can learn from the enemy team here is sometimes you have to let your teammate go. One person dying is not so bad, but three people dying to try and save them is obviously much worse. Awelix got really greedy for that kill on King Arthur, so yeah, sometimes you just have to know when to cut your losses. Once again, I'm telling my Tsukiyomi that their team is coming towards him, but he was too busy 1v1ing the honor to realize. Luckily, some great peel from my teammate gets him out, and we manage to trade our support for their ADC and his beads. I missed my hammer on the Merlin, which sucked, but a Wheelix must have thought my keyboard wasn't plugged that just walked straight at me, so that was an easy kill. I made a horrible call here to go for their mid tower. This was just super greedy and bad. We could have easily reset and taken a fight at gold since we had just picked their jungler. I should have recognized that their solo would be rotating, so that was my bad entirely. I'm pretty sure we could have defended this gold pool if Arthur had stayed, but he was half HP so maybe not. 
And then this ult was really bad for me. I should have just let them have it. You can't really be ulting into five people by yourself. My relic usage here was also horrible, so yeah, just really awful plays for me right there. Our support gets picked in mid here, and it's obvious they're going to pull Pyro, so I make the call to defend. We're only down 3k gold, and a 4v5 is not so bad if you can play slow and smart. Guan called to place a ward for teleport, so I drop one immediately before ulting. They did manage to secure Pyro, but it was still good for us in the end because we decimated them in the fight afterward. I think we probably could have pulled FG here, but the team wasn't really in position and we also didn't have a traditional ADC, so I make the call to just take two of their tier 1 towers. Sometimes in rank, the best call is the safe call since there's a lack of comps. This minion wave definitely would have finished the solo tower, but I realized Guan might TP and save it, so I stuck around to finish it off. We're still a little bit behind in gold at this point. I really wanted to hit level 20 before this back so I could buy bluestone upgrade, but in the meantime they just heisted fire. Pretty unfortunate misplay from me. Merlin shreds it really fast, and we also didn't have great vision around fire, so I should have realized they would pull it. Their team was extremely greedy chasing out our Arthur here, and threw pretty hard, which was massive for us. I realized their front line was super deep, so I went on this Merlin who was separated, but on her step back to peel for him, so I disengaged. Kind of a bad Aegis for me, I thought I would take a lot more damage here. My buddy gets a really insane Sylvan Assault onto both their carries, so I re-engage with my ult. If I beads the Gebalt here when hammering on her, I would have lived and the fight would have been a lot cleaner, but overall I'll definitely take a 4 for 1 trade, especially since they had FG. Mid T2 and gold was the call here. We definitely didn't have enough time to take a Phoenix without a traditional ADC to shred the towers. Tsukiyomi got really greedy taking their jungle farm and gets picked at purple, but we did manage to trade the on her, which was honestly probably worth in the end. I figured someone might come mid to clear the wave and stop me from pushing any further, so I hold the corner here and you can see the Merlin dashes right into me and has to burn beads. Since their team was just fighting in right, I actually thought about ulting onto him here because his dash and beads were down, but I can't lie, I was scared I would miss. To be honest, that play would have been a little psychotic, so I played it safe. My team doesn't need my damage to help clear gold, and I knew for sure that the enemy team would try to trade Pyro, so I ran over to see if I could stop them. If the enemy team wants to secure this safely, they have to have someone zone me, which should be the Geb in this case, but they decided to coin flip it and lost. Some good awareness led to an easy steal for me, so I was pretty happy about this, and Arthur did run over to grab the bomb, which is a big win for us. You really want to try and have good vision around fire before it spawns, so when the fight happens you know exactly where everyone is. I place a sentry and immediately back for another one. I'm telling my team to force a fight here, because I know the Merlin's beads are still down from earlier. I seriously should have beads this Gebel. I mean, I really don't know what I was thinking. And then right here, I just made the absolute dumbest decision possible and went back in. I guess I thought I could kill the Merlin since his beads were down, but I completely whiffed the ult. Also, I'm pretty sure I lived if I just ran straight away and didn't look for a wall, so yeah, another really bad play from me. Luckily, the enemy team was inting even harder and threw right back. Bit of an on her moment here, jumping into three people. I'm not sure what crossed his mind, but we'll take it. Now they can't do fire since our Arthur is spawning and their ADC is dead. You can see on the map Guan ulted to engage, but our team was actually completely safe until Tsukiyomi decided to ult back in. Yeah, both teams inting back and forth is typical for a ranked conquest game. I looked for some poke here, which was kind of silly. I had to beads the Gebalt to escape, but at least I lived. 
Me and Awilix took about the same amount of damage, and he would have taken a lot more if not for the Heroism Shield. As soon as the Merlin dashed in, I went up to ult him, but hammered out once he used his relics. I knew Arthur would finish him off, and I didn't want to get focused, especially since both my relics were down. I can see Awilix is kind of looking for me here, so I'm holding my wall in case he does something goofy, but I guess this time he realized my keyboard was plugged in, so he doesn't go for it. This fire call was bad because we didn't have the damage to shred it, and three of them were still alive. Also, me and the Arthur were poked out, and it would have been really sketchy fighting in the pit. I managed to hammer out just in time to avoid the Guan ult, and immediately flank around the backside. You can see my Agni is calling to retreat, and I'm spamming attack because I know this is good. A better player probably would have realized I was wrapping around this way, but this honor was completely oblivious and I get both his relics for free. A great pull from Sylvanas here helps secure the kill, but I should have let my team finish the job because just two autos from that guy would have killed me if he crit and I didn't Aegis. Once again we've got two picks, but it's still kinda scary to pull fire. This time we know the Merlin's relics are down, which will make the fight a lot easier. I whiffed my ult on him here, but since his relics are down, he's still a free kill. Also, I did not need to Aegis the Squan ult. There was no follow up, but I kind of panicked. We're finally able to pull fire safely here. The Guan is dead, so there's no danger to our backline because the Wheelix can't dive our count by herself, and we also know the Honor's relics are down. We had good ward vision as well, which definitely makes things a lot easier. I step up to help the Arthur's zone here, which is something a lot of low level players definitely need to work on. If all five of us are just sitting in the ring DPSing Fire Giant, the odds it gets stolen or something goes wrong are much higher. Having people zone is necessary for things to go smoothly. Usually this job will fall on the jungler and solo as you see here, but depending on your comp and the situation, things may change. Like for example, if I'm Arachne here, it's probably better that the Tsukiyomi zones with King Arthur since I'd be doing way more damage to FG. If Arthur was poked out or the first person to tank it, me and Sylvanas would likely be zoning so that we don't have to juggle aggro, especially since this is ranked and there's no comps. I considered calling gold and backing for a 3k bot. After all, we had plenty of time left on FG to play slow, but ultimately I decided I wouldn't need it and didn't want to hold up our momentum. If it was comp, I likely would have made this call since 3k pot is like the best item in the game. But in ranked, I don't want my teammates to get frustrated or impatient when we could be sieging. I told my team to try and bait their relics, as we don't want to overcommit and waste our CC and damage on someone that can easily escape it. Taking a preliminary fight to get some of their resources can make sieging a whole lot easier. It's especially good here because we have healing from Sylvanas, so we could just heal up after disengaging. This can be kind of hard to pull off and rank sometimes since there is no comms, but I wanted to mention it anyway. I take some poke after getting this ward down, so I'm telling my team to play slow while I get healed up from FG buff and Sylvanas too. Now if we win this fight it should be the end of the game, but don't leave just yet because I make a really bad call here. As soon as I see this Geb waste his shield, I'm telling my friend the Sylvanas to go in. It's a perfect time to engage, and even though we don't have a minion wave with us, we do have enhanced fire giant, so the phoenix will fall pretty quickly. I thought about landing on Guan to help our backline out, but realized they were fine and he was disengaging. Also, staying in the air for a little while can cause some players to panic as they worry about where you'll land and how to respond. You can see the Merlin playing super far back because he's scared I'll land on him. It also gives me extra time to think about the proper target. Choosing incorrectly could throw the fight and swing the game in their favor. I managed to land on both the on her and the Geb, just barely missing the 3 man ult on Guan. A great pull by Sylvanas here grabs the Merlin right into all of our damage, and after that their defense falls right apart. Here is where I messed up. 4 of them dead. Three of us with Enhanced Fire Giant versus just Guan and the Titan. 
I kind of saw red and for some reason thought we had the damage to just end. But what we should have done is clear the few minions stopping our wave from entering so they could tank for us. Bad relic usage by me as well, and the game's not quite over yet. It's really sketchy here, because if we play the fight incorrectly, the enemy team could counter in. A full build Merlin melts the Titan, and they also have a traditional ADC to take down towers and phoenixes. Once again, I'm telling my team to play slow. The fire wave is pushing down right lane, and if they don't send someone to stop it, that Titan is toast. Once Fire Wave is entering the Titan room, I make the call to engage. And now the game is over. A couple key points I want to go over before I end the video. 1. Play around enemies' relics. Knowing when they will come up is a huge advantage, so try to keep track of that. 2. Use your relics. Twice this game I died because I failed the beads and ate a ton of damage that could have been avoided. 3. Don't try to be a hero, like when I was 1 HP and ulted in on Merlin. It would have been much better if I just made the safe play and escaped. 4. Be patient and slow. Oftentimes games are thrown by rushing when you could be waiting for the right opportunity. And 5. Teamwork is key. My team did a great job listening to calls and playing around each other, which made the game a whole lot easier. So there you go. That was an in-depth analysis of what I'm thinking about when I'm playing. Please like if you enjoyed the video, and let me know in the comments if you want to see more of this in-depth style content. You know, I can't see the grass getting cleaner cause Out here ain't nothing but blue in your eyes But red, the top helps a little but hey.